Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm glad that you're nodding your head yes, Dr. Martell. That, make, that puts me kind of in my comfort zone that somebody's coming in behind you with some expertise to keep, keep widening, widening the road that you've paved. Um, I picked up on the, I call it cross-functional teams, where you have your engineers sitting with your operators, and that, that dynamic back and forth just lends itself to forward-leaning success. So I'm sure the expansive, uh, expansive, expansiveness of that is growing. Yeah. Uh, you lead the data integration layer for CJADC2, correct? Correct. Uh, this is likely, in my opinion, the most critical p position in that department. Uh, given its centrality in moving and exchanging data between and within each services, this likely requires not just coordination, but direction to the various stakeholders. Uh, can you explain what directive authority you've been afforded in building the data integration layer? I, can I? That's a great question. Uh, in terms of the authorities, I can tell you what we've been doing, and then I can take as a, a question for the record what authorities we've been doing them under. Okay. Um, but uh, right now, we've been building out the prototype of what it would mean for the hardware to support the flow of data across combatant commands. So, combat, for example, so combatant commands ha can have a unified picture of what's going on in the world. We're doing that as the key learning exercise, and we do it every 90 days through these guide exercises, as the key learning exercise to understand what combatant, and through wargaming, what combatant commanders would need to see, and what all of the uh, um, uh, components under the combatant commanders would need to see, would need to exchange, and how data would need to flow uh, in order for it to go from swivel chair and PowerPoint and email to digital data flows as that information as that information goes um, uh, across the combatant commands and within the combatant commands. So the next step, which we should be doing within the next three to six months, is building out a set of requirements so that industry can help join. I mean, we've been doing this with key industrial partners, mostly Palantir and Andrel, but it needs to be, it needs to, and it's, and the, tech, and the technology that we've built, we're leaving behind, it's there, it's available, that's what we call it, a minimum viable capability. It's viable. Um, we then need to build out clear requirements that allow other, in, uh, other industrial partners to join in and to expand that data integration layer, and then also to expand those capabilities. It sounds like something this, we might need to tweak this a little bit as you're starting to transition, something that you wish you would have had that the incoming can have. That's something you need to address with this committee, I would say. Yeah, absolutely, and I will, I would, prefer to take it as a question for the record yes, and get you absolutely. an absolutely clean, I understand it. I understand it. clean definition of what we need. Mr. Chairman, do we have two, are we doing two rounds or just one? Uh, okay. I could use about four or five. All right, can you, uh, I'm Dr. Martyr, can you explain what would be the consequences of affording your position with some sort of directive authority over the services and their development of CJSC2 solutions? I, I'm not a fan of that. And I'm not a fan of a, of a hard authority there. And, and I may be saying the wrong words because um, I, I haven't quite got up in the two years I've been here in all the bureaucratic lingo I should. Um, I think the services understand, in general, let me just say in general, the center should provide oversight and policy and best practices. The edge knows their problems best. So solving the problems from the center and imposing it upon the edge, I think is dangerous. It's going to create one-size-fits-all solutions that don't... You should write that down and put it on a plaque so we can hang it in every room in this building. I'll take that as a, an activity for the record, sir. Okay. <laughs> that was a joke. We're not really going to do that, guys. Um, and the services understand what they need better than OSD is going to understand what they need. But there does have to be authority about, about the interface. So data is going to have to go down into the, service, into the services, and the right kind of data is going to have to flow up out of the services. So where we've been spending our energy with the services, say project convergence or with overmatch, is figuring out how would that data flow. We still have the policy questions or the workflow questions about what data should flow. So uh, I actually see uh, we, what we've been doing, to be clear, is putting the tech before the policy. The tech to allow the data to flow is going to force the right questions. What data should flow? Right? Like, uh, we, we can't answer Title 10 and Title 50 combinations a priori. We can't just start with that. We have to watch the data flow, and then there's going to be an increased demand for data to flow and the right data to flow, and um, then we can say, well, now, now that's a policy issue that we can tackle, or that's a small version of the policy issue for just that one piece of data. 
It, that's the way that the change is going to happen. The change is not going to happen, my very strong opinion, the change is not going to happen by some large a priori view, of philosophical view of the way the world should be, and then trying to implement that. Okay, thanks, sir. Dr. Cormick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I find it fascinating.